welcome to What's Your Signature? Hello and welcome to What's Your Signature? I'm your host, Sophia Von Siren, finesse performer and producer of Von Siren Productions. Today I have a very special show. I am chatting to Safira, the founder of World Burlesque Day, which is on the 26th of April. Now, Safira is based in London, but she's an Australian burlesque author, entrepreneur, singer, songwriter, and teacher. So let's welcome Safira. Hi, Safira, and welcome to What's Your Signature? Hello, thanks for having me, Sophia. It's lovely to see you all the way in sunny South Africa. Yes, yeah, sunny, and we can't even enjoy it at the moment. We're all locked in our homes. You can look out the window. It still makes it better than looking out at the rainy sky. <laughs> I'm dumb, I'm sure. <laughs> so, Fyra, I've uh, previously gone through all your credentials. I see you're an author and a musician, and you've got so many talents. Um, thanks. So I'd like to talk about this book you've published, Burlesque or Bus. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, it's uh, my mental health recovery story because, you know, for me, burlesque was just a bit more than dancing around in a costume. It was really a big chance to come to terms with sex and my sensuality. I'd been in this very oppressive Christian brethren household for my entire upbringing. And there was just this real foreboding sense around puberty as I started to get more womanly. Uh, the elders in the church group were pretty disapproving and slowly but surely a lot of the fun things got banned like dancing was prohibited after I felt personally I did a really sexy rendition of Daniel in the Lion's Den at, eight, at the eight years of age group uh, Sunday school play and so then you know we were told non-Christian music was satanic and that KISS stood for kids in Satan's service. So we were really relegated to these dreary Christian hymn books and renditions on tape. So, you know, I was very damaged and burlesque gave me a chance when I, you know, came to London to just rebuild myself. I don't really realize, I think at the time, how much it was gonna play a role in my life, but it truly transformed me. And I think it was a psychological process that I'm fascinated to learn more about actually scientifically what was going on because um, it was incredible. The sense of being a different name under these lights, you know, costume in an altered state that just helped me to rectify all of that. It's wonderful how Belize can do that for us to make mm -hmm. us feel empowered mm -hmm. as women in our bodies. Um, that's a wonderful story. Where can people find that your book it's called Burlesque or Bust, and it's on Amazon. It came out with a mental health publisher called Trigger, and they're a global publisher. So their goal is to really share true real life stories, not celebrity stories so much, but just genuine day to day memoirs. Some of them are success stories. Mine's one of the inspirational series and others are just reality stories of people coping and what they do day to day if they've you know, had postnatal depression or CEOs living with obsessive compulsive disorder all sorts of different things that you wouldn't think are really in people's lives because it's all been so taboo. But in fact, a lot of people are coming out and these books are really interesting. So that's on everywhere. Amazon um, is the main place, you know, to order it from, but bookstores when they reopen and a lot of online bookstores now. And okay. I think there's also an ebook. Wonderful. Um, so World Burlesque Day, which we are having today, how did that come about? What is World Burlesque Day? Well, Burlesque Day was just this initiative uh, to really unite the global burlesque community, but actually it, it became a bit bigger than that because initially we were doing a class sort of format, maybe one here in London and one in Melbourne, but as the coronavirus started to take precedence, we had to cancel all our physical classes. And I talked to the team and said, you know, I think we should take this online. Everyone's doing online classes. And it's been really enriching because now it's, it has two purposes, to reach new people, because for me, it's so transformational. I want everyone to try it, you know, young and old. And also it, the second purpose is just to, you know, unite the 
sparkly burlesque community on the internet on this great day uh, to give us something to look forward to, a reason to dress up. You know, I think we're all kind of suffering from quarantine blues in terms of fashion. I know uh, my style is slipping and I'm taking a lot of care in my presentation, wearing leggings most days. So um, I Same. thought it would be an excuse to dress up, right? <laughs> 100%. I am pretty much in leggings or sweats most days now. <laughs> Right, so I thought I need to dust off my high heels and make sure that I don't forget, you know, how to tie up a corset. So to me, it was yeah, really for everybody, and, and it's amazing. I'm I'm actually shocked at the level of engagement from places I didn't even really know had burlesque: the Philippines, Shanghai, in China, uh, Korea. So yeah, there's just this burgeoning and evolving burlesque scene, huh? That's fantastic. I love being part of this greater community and it's wonderful to bring everybody together under one event like this. Yeah, I hope that it will be very connecting and uniting. So do I. I'm feeling very disconnected with this coronavirus thing and I, that's why I decided to do this little show as well, is to just connect with people because now we have this wonderful opportunity, I think, once in a lifetime opportunity where we're reaching out where we wouldn't before, mm. I think. Um, so how can people get involved for the next one? Well, we're kind of deciding what will happen for 2021, but I'd like to keep an element of the online presence going because I think it's a very easy way that anyone from anywhere and from the comfort of their home can get involved. If my goal is to try and reach new people, which it is, because I do think a lot of people are struggling with body image and you know sensuality and various things. If I want to reach them, I think some of them will be more inclined to give it a go from the comfort of their living room where they're more anonymous because I work in universities and I know for a fact that a couple of lecturers have commented since they've been forced to take classrooms online, some of the quieter students are more engaged because they don't feel as intimidated speaking up in a chat forum as they would in a large lecture theatre to ask a question. And it made me think burlesque is a bit similar. It takes quite an extrovert to be ready to step their first foot in the door of a class. You know, you have no yeah. idea what you're in for. You've seen Dita Von Tees probably in some other di different bits and pieces. So for the very shyest person, that's probably too much, but they might be willing to give it a go online and then take that step physically to join a class. So I feel like that's, going to be continuing in 2021 and throughout the year just because it's world burlesque day on the 26th of april it doesn't mean we're just going to disappear for that entire year throughout the year i want to still be doing activities we might do fundraisers we might do christmas shows or valentines or you know these other nationalities have different holidays like uh, india has diwali i'm sure there's national holidays in the philippines that we should recognize because we're world burlesque day so it's good for me i'm really opening my eyes culturally to the world but definitely throughout the year just tag us and hashtag us we'll always repost and retweet and reshare things on instagram it's it's be a great way to get in touch that sounds wonderful i'm loving this now safira if you wouldn't mind would you please show us your signature move i don't have a signature move uh, other than it's been always a signature to welcome everyone with a butterfly because for me, it has been so transformational. And after my breakdown, uh, I got very sick in, in Australia after being in this Brethren community. Uh, I found like, as I was healing, that this butterfly really meant a lot to me. So that's what I've done for nearly 14 years. Television stations, journalists, students, music producers, publishers, I uh, can't think of other places, record labels, anyone that's come across my path that's been involved in burlesque with us has been given a butterfly of some description, even if it's just something in the post. So that's my signature. I just think this art form represents great things for us in terms of recovery, ongoing transformation. And it, that is multi-layered. I wouldn't say, oh, I did that first strip tease and that's where that part of it stopped. I think even in 14 years now, it's just a continual in, ongoing inward journey. That's my signature. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for being part of our in my interview and I wish no you all the success. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, great. Bye. Bye.